you can see me looking down I'm just sort of tidying the workspace as I introduce this video <laughs> Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm gonna to be doing something that will benefit you all, hopefully. I'm gonna teach you guys how to make a face mask out of two pattern pieces. Really, really easy. I wasn't really using this video as like a tutorial video. This was more of a public awareness video. Pattern piece, I literally made it by tracing around the outside of another mask that I have that I've taken apart to make a template. We have two types of masks here at home. We have these fabric ones that have that have these straps on the side, but they're really see-through. And to be honest, if you can feel your breath coming through your mask, then it's not really effective if that makes sense we also have like the medical ones with the metal tape in the top all down over your face they're like disposable and you can only use them once i think that's a real waste which is why i think fabric masks that you can chuck in the wash and use over and over again are going to be a lot better for the environment that's why i'm going to show you guys how to make them also fabric is really inexpensive i recommend you go to a shop to buy fabric just because you can actually feel the fabric and it's better than just looking at a picture online and hoping that it comes out the way that you want it to this is for the like strappy bit and this is for the actual mask bit i'm gonna make it in the same fabric that i've just made this one because i don't want to start a whole new thing of fabric but that was one mask so i'm gonna get four more masks out of this fabric which i think is really really good this is a quarter of fabric in a fabric shop you can ask if they sell quarters or um if you can get a quarter of like fabric that you like or you can get loads of it and make loads of the same fabric but i have quite a few different fabrics so i'm gonna have loads of different like masks just so that i have one to like go with different outfits and that's kind of mainly why i'm making it so that i have masks to go with different outfits and to make sure that they're really effective as well because i don't want to be wearing a mask that isn't going to protect me the way that it's meant to cutting your fabric i'm gonna have to turn this camera around now i've just realized that you're probably not gonna see my face till the end of this video but that's okay because i'm gonna show you how to make a face mask so ignore the cable for my sewing machine cutting out your fabric you are gonna need some pins so you can pin down your pattern piece i have my fabric i've got my pattern piece which is here and i know that this side here is going to be the fold so this is where this is the middle of my face so that's going to have to be on the fold of the fabric so that i've got two sides of it and that it's all the right size and the right shape and all that jazz so i'm gonna pin my pattern piece to it and then just cut around the edge. I recommend using cotton because I literally need three pins and that's not going anywhere. Once I pinned it down I'm gonna turn my fabric around so that the side that I'm cutting is closest to me and then I'm just gonna cut around the edge of my pattern piece. Then for the strap I'm gonna pin the strap piece onto my fabric. I'm gonna do it on the fold and then just cut it in half once I've cut it out. Sorry if you can hear all the people in the park. I have to have my window open because it's just too hot in my room. And I don't wanna have the fan on because that is like also really loud. So I'm gonna be making a mask that has three layers. So I've got this outside layer. I'm gonna have a middle layer and the layer that's gonna sit on my skin because my friend Emily has been making masks and she says that if you can feel your breath through your mask, then it's not very effective. So that is why I'm gonna add three layers. So the middle layer, I'm gonna be using this fabric i think it's called bonderweb or interfacing but i thought that i could use it as not a filter because it's not you know obviously medical grade or anything but it's probably going to do better than just using one layer of fabric there we go again it's on the fold of the fabric then i'm just going to cut around the edge then for my inner layer so the layer that's going to sit on my skin i'm going to use this calico fabric calico is great for lining i'm going to use it to line my mask and then just cut around the edge again it's on the fold and then just cut around the edge now i've got my sewing machine i am going to make the straps first so the issue with my other mask is that i literally cut out a loop of fabric i didn't cut just sort of like a straight line of fabric and i've decided that cutting a straight line is going to be a lot easier what i'm going to do is with my strip of fabric i'm going to turn both the sides in this is a little bit awkward to show you but turn both the sides in so it's sort of one thin strip i'm going to do that all the way along then literally just sew one straight line down the middle of it filling the bobbin up because I've run out of bobbin thread. So I've got the two straps, they're a little bit messy, but just cut the excess thread off. And then I'm gonna start pinning the pieces of the mask together. I discovered when I was putting this together the first time that when you pin it together, you're gonna want your main mask piece on the bottom 
fabric side up so this is the side that's going to be on the outside then you are going to want to put your calico fabric over the top but before that we're going to add the straps so we're going to do a technique called bagging out so if any of you have watched sewing bee and saw the marilyn monroe dress challenge you'll know what i mean by bagging out everything that's going to be on the outside has to be on the inside when you're sewing it for the first time so i'm going to pin the straps into the right position on the side of the mask so like that so my two straps are now on my mask and then when i pin the other layers on top i need to make sure that the straps are on the inside i'm going to pin this all around the edge try not to leave any pins on the inside so i pin the strap in i'm going to take the pin in that's holding the strap and pin the rest of the fabric to it like that so there's the pin where the strap is take that out pin the strap the outside layer and the calico layer all in one pin then do the same on the other side then i'm going to take my filter layer or just like the inside layer and pin that on top as well then literally just do the exact same thing with the pin where the strap is just make sure that you have all of the layers of fabric together in that pin so that it stays together when you sew it then once you've got all the pieces pinned where the straps are you're going to go around the edge and pin the different sections together but when you do this make sure you don't get the straps involved just make sure that they're like on the inside of the fabric and they're not pinned to where you pin around the edge when you pin it around the edge i want you to leave either the top or the bottom with a gap so that you don't sew it so sew like from here all the way around to here so that this space in between is open so that you can turn the whole thing inside out and this process is exactly the same as if you're hand sewing it as well just hand sewing it does take a little bit longer but that's fine now that i've pinned it and it's all secure in one thing i'm going to sew all the way from this pin all the way around the edge to this pin here and make sure in your first few stitches you do a reverse stitch you should have like a little lever on the front which is what i have or like a button that lets you do reverse um if you do a reverse stitch then it makes sure that you don't have like an end of a stitch that could come loose your it's all secure so forward three back three and then just go all the way around and then once you get to the end do the same reverse stitch so i've sewn all the way around the edge what i'm gonna do is just trim like half of the edge off. So I've cut all my excess fabric off. Now what I'm gonna do is get the layer so that the two, the calico and my little filter layer are on one side and my outer layer is on the other. And then just push that all the way through. Pull the straps out. Do is grab a pen. I don't know where my pen went, there it is. Put it inside and push the corners and the different seams out so that I've got the full size of the mask just like that okay these straps are so much better than the ones that I've made before now what I'm gonna do is tuck this in then go around the entire mask and do a top stitch so top stitch is a stitch that you will be able to see over the top of the mask just to like sort of keep it down because it's quite puffy at the moment but once I've top stitched it it's gonna you know fit a lot better and it's gonna lay a lot flatter so i've just tucked that in pin that down and then do a top stitch around the whole edge of the mask then i'm just gonna cut away the flyaway threads and there we go we have a face mask i'm intrigued to see how this one is gonna fit because obviously i made it a little bit differently to the first one that i made so let's hook it over my ear and over this one it's it's a little big it's a bit big we're gonna have to make this smaller aren't we because otherwise it doesn't work as a face mask and that's fine if it's a little bit big all i'm gonna do is fold it in half like that and then sew a line down the middle and then i can just cut away this and it's just like a little bit of extra fabric that's been taken off it's obviously gonna be a lot easier to change it if it's bigger rather than smaller if it's too small then you might have to sacrifice it and give it to someone else that it will fit oh maybe it's the straps that's making it too big it's the straps okay let's make the straps shorter let's make the straps smaller shall we then i'm going to do the same on the other side just take it in a little bit I've literally just folded the strap over and it's sort of sewn to there now and then i'll just cut this little extra bit off like i said it's really easy fixes that you can just tweak to make sure it fits you properly because i'd rather everyone has like nicely fitting masks than masks that don't fit and then 
don't work and try it on again i think that's the bottom that's the top oh that's much better okay so adjust the straps maybe not stitch it right in the middle that fits a lot better that is actually a really nicely fitting mask now looks quite funny because my mouth is moving up and down and therefore is my chin and therefore is the mask so it looks kind of funny but how super easy is that honestly easiest thing i've ever sewn in my life i'm i'm chuffed with that also the fabric is so cute i'm kind of happy this big bouquet of flowers is like in the corner of this one it's cute and it fits and it's great make masks people because it's a lot better than buying disposable ones that is the end of today's video i have a successful face mask and it fits really nice it doesn't feel too hot on my face because i use quite light fabrics There's a lot going on in the park today but it's cute i really like it obviously masks aren't there to be like a fashion accessory but if you can make them pretty then you might as well if you want to like just do it it's so easy to make by wearing this i could be either helping my own life someone else's life stopping someone from getting the virus i'm really happy with that and it's really easy to make i'm probably going to make a load more of these now but thank you so much for watching this video guys please like and subscribe let me know down below if you've made your own mask so now when you go out wear a mask stay safe and i will see you on wednesday bye everyone